at AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. So, <clears throat> how's it all going, by the way? What? The new business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that thing. Yeah. Um, really good. Have we started? Yeah, yeah. We actually yeah. started ages ago. Oh, good. Yeah. I hope the singing was fun. But... Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, how's it all going? Really well. Yeah. Um, I think everything that we planned for yep. is, is, is kind of, everything's kind of coming to fruition. Mm. Um, I'm not going to lie, some days I come in quite overwhelmed, but <laughs> yeah. Jess is head of uh, Fox and Hair Wellness Program, so... The wellness... The oh, wellness the, program. the employee wellness program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I make us, um, I make us, you know, take deep breaths and yeah, yeah. to celebrate. Do you guys do, like, morning yoga? We well, were just talking about <laughs> yeah. Stop it. Once a week we wanted... Well, it's just so easy to be completely overwhelmed by everything mm. because it's a never-ending list and it's actually really important that you don't think about everything because... It's just too much and it's mm. super easy to just be frazzled and not be productive at all. Totally. Mm. So I think, you know, having, it sounds stupid, but, you know, having some time out to go to yoga or I've downloaded this um, Smiling Minds app to try to make us both do some kind of deep breathing and meditation. He thinks I'm crazy. Um, How important to that one? Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is that like headspace? Similar yeah. to headspace, Smiling okay. Minds. So it's like short meditation, like um, spoken meditation sessions yeah, to yeah, try yeah. to calm you down right. because it's I can feel you know you can feel when mm. there's a lot going on but it's yeah. exciting as well so there's that adrenaline that just yeah yeah through. and 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 you went straight from employment mm. <laughs> I think you had about a half an hour of getting used to the job an hour and a half, an hour and a half. Oh, you guys started at eight o'clock six thirty we started six thirty yeah like as in you start the concept of waking up from REM sleep no like as in, <laughs> like, like as in, your brain goes, <clears throat> maybe I'll wake up in oh, half an hour or something like that. Like I'm buzzing into the door at, at six thirty. Yeah. yeah. Well, no wonder you need yoga. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. God's sake. Yeah. But I mean, we do it a bit different. Like a lot of people, I feel, stay quite late, but we're usually out the door by kind of seven, seven. So it's still a long day. Yeah. Seven thirty a.m. So you start at six thirty <laughs> and you're out the door at seven thirty. So I like that. Back to I like that. <laughs> no. Um, six thirty in the morning to seven thirty at night. Yeah, generally. You go to the gym. And stuff. I go to the gym in the middle yeah. of the day and whatnot. Sure, sure, sure. Did you? Were you guys doing six thirty starts at your respective jobs prior? I did on an ad hoc basis. I just find mm. that between six thirty and eight. Like I can steamroll so much of my admin because mm. the phone doesn't ring Whoa. and like you like for me I'm a morning person so mm. in the morning yeah, my yeah, brain yeah, is yeah. like going so mm. I just you know write a to do list the night before so that when yeah. I come in it's there yeah. and then by eight o'clock I've smashed I don't know half of it mm. which is good what yeah it's insane we don't really live but we're trying to kind of shake the concept that you have to work from 8 30 to 5 30 or monday to friday like yeah, yeah. if we want to have a monday morning off to do something specific mm. uh, yeah we do but then we work most saturdays yeah um, well you guys are business owners now you have the freedom the freedom to work all the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, embracing that. we're embracing the freedom yeah. <laughs> but that's a good point like um a lot of our clients want to see us on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's super convenient for them. They can come in their gym gear, bring their dog, bring yeah. the little ones. You guys doing client meetings on a Saturday? Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Our Saturdays are booked in for the next, up Probably. until Christmas, really. Yeah. But that's fine. Like uh, I took yesterday morning here? off. Yeah. Yeah. And people, clients are willing to come see you. Where's the Surrey Hills? It's not like they have to go into the CBD, which is quite, quite, you know, drab and sterile on the weekends. Like they come, they grab a coffee and the people we're meeting with uh, this weekend, they're bringing their kid. Like it's, yeah. it's the, the office space that we're wow. in is, is um, I suppose a little bit more welcoming to, yeah. to, to, to that. But like to your point about being a business owner, like why wouldn't we? Yeah. It's just another day. A hundred percent. No, yeah. no, no. I, I've got, I love it. I'm really impressed by it. I don't know any, 
any advisor that sees clients on a Saturday. Saturday, we work from about eight until two on a yeah. Saturday. Yeah. So that, you know, but that is super convenient, particularly for couples. Like people are busy during the week doing their work. They're busy being, you know, yes. in work frame of mind. Yeah. So weekends, if they can, you know, get them a coffee, they come in at nine, you know, get it all done. They look out of the kitchen gear. They're really happy and people are so excited going, oh, I'm really, I'm really glad you can see me on a Saturday. Mm. That is... A great concept. Now, obviously, this is eating into your personal time, so mm. it might be great for them as a couple. Mm. How are your respective other halves taking the fact that you're mm. gone for that Saturday? That's a good point. Um, I probably have um, a bit more of a challenge than Glenn because mm. I have a stepson, yep. and so that is something that we need to manage. So I'm just really cautious about you know making sure that um, Sundays are mm. important. So Sundays, Sundays. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. and also that, you know, if we have things on a Saturday, I just block it out so mm. that I can't do a client meeting on that day. Sure. Mm. Um, but if it means that I can go and collect him from school earlier during mm. the weekdays, mm. every second Tuesday, we have him for an afternoon. So right. it's just this whole concept that, you know, you just make what works for you and your family. Mm. Yeah. Say it's the same. Yeah, totally. I mean, I don't see Saturday any different to a Tuesday. Sure. You know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah, every day is the same. Yeah. Um, similar, similar to Jess. So Sunday is our um, day where neither of us, neither yeah, of us work, family yep. day. Um, so a lot of time at church then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spend a lot of time at church yeah. getting free bread and wine. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, um, we he, he's also a business owner. So yeah. his, his, although his hours aren't as flexible, yeah. um, does does give us the ability to kind of manage our days. That's so awesome. I, I, I mean, it's one of the many things I think that are going to make you guys very successful. Um, and you're, uh, you know, essentially new to this profession, right? Although you've worked in and around it yeah. for uh, collectively, I'd imagine, 15 years. Years or something. Twenty-two. Twenty. Oh, God. 22. Yeah. 22, I think we've worked out. You guys are really old. Yeah. We're really old. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's actually. I was thinking about the other day. I was talking about you know because I'm doing something new as well, and and, I, and the concept of well, if it doesn't work, it's okay. Like I got a lot left in me, and as I said those words, the concept. You're mid thirties now. It really <laughs> dawned on me more than any other time in history, and and, and I uh, yeah, and so yeah, we are we're now old. Oh, oh, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> old as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know. Like we 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 are so excited at the moment, and it's probably so much adrenaline that we're like, this is amazing. <laughs> um, and by the time we retire, you know, retirement age is probably going to be ninety. So yes. we've got a long. long yeah, totally. Like this. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, you know, it was amazing to watch you guys pull this business together. And I've never seen more diligence, forethought, um, structure. And, and structure planning <laughs> go into launching a, a, a new uh, financial planning business. Um, what, 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 made you, what made you leave your very uh, profitable, great career paths, mm. you know, um, you had hit director, right? By the mm. time you left Macquarie mm. and you had just taken on a new role, essentially being the face mm. for what I could tell of Zurich. Yeah. So, um, you know, great career paths. Yeah. You've got this amazing opportunity in the, um, in the employed land. Mm. So um, why did you guys join advice? Yeah, so for me, the, uh, the last couple of years of Macquarie, my clients were all financial planning firms and accounting firms. Yep. And um, I think I just saw uh, an area of the market that, that wasn't being serviced, which is the younger demographic. Yep. And with this whole concept of fox and hare, Jess and I have been working on together for the best part of two and a half years. Right. Um, and we just wanted to do something a little bit different. Yeah. Um, which, which, is a, which is a big reason why we didn't buy into a business. We mm. didn't buy a book of clients. Yeah. Um, we didn't want to, I suppose, inherit any legacy issues or processes or yep. things like that. So yep. everything we've built has been looking at, I guess, what's been best practice within mm -hmm. the wealth management industry, um, but also 
definitely beyond that. So looking at systems that other, uh, you know, professional firms use or client service firms use uh, and trying to embed them in our business. Yep. Um, literally starting from the ground up, like Jess and I would catch up every single week and talk about everything from client value proposition to, you know, which, which candor would buy to, to determine what our office smelled like. Like everything. Uh, that was a Glenn Lynn discussion. Yeah, well, you know, client <laughs> experience, right? <laughs> there um, is no candle here today. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I feel really left out right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for, 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 for me personally, it was just seeing an opportunity in the market to, to work with a different client base. Mm. Yes. I think for me, um, as you kind of alluded to, the fact that we're getting old, like we worked mm. in corporate for over 10 years each mm. and li living and working in corporate for that amount of time is phenomenal. Like the mm. opportunities that you get to meet people, to learn things, to really push yourself yes. and see phenomenal leaders and work mm. out what you love in their leadership style. Yes. Um, you know, that's amazing. And so much of that we've been able to draw on mm. to build this. But I guess from my perspective, it was that I felt like you know, if you're looking at what we do as a supply chain in, in the kind of supply chain, mm. you know, I was kind of stuck in the middle. And whilst that was incredibly fun and, and exciting, and I got to meet loads of people who were giving advice, I just felt that I wasn't tangibly making a difference to the end person. Mm. Yep. And for me, that's incredibly important. Like I want to see someone go through the journey and I want to see that they're achieving stuff. And it, yeah. I just wasn't getting mm. that. So yep. It was hard. It was super hard. Like mm. it was super hard leaving roles and organisations that we loved and yeah, we really yeah, respected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But at the end of the day, as Glenn said, like we wanted to build something that was ours, yeah. and mm. we wanted to have, I guess, complete control over how things were, were done and how they were built. Yeah. Um, but it was not without, you know, a lot of kind of trepidation and yeah. and sadness. I cried the day oh. before I resigned. <laughs> Crying. We both left on really good terms with both of our uh, managers at the time saying, you know, if Fox and Head doesn't doesn't work out, yes. yeah. um, we'd both have, you know, opportunities back at Zurich or, or, or Macquarie. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Always that way, I think. Yeah, um, 100%. This new style of financial advice, um, you know, obviously something at XY has been built around um, but seeing in practices, you know, Ben's Pivot Wealth, mm. right? Uh, you've got the Verse guys yeah. down, down in Melbourne and, and, and now you guys, it's, it's, it's amazing to see the, and here's my big word of the day, apotheosis. We, 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 Please we're like cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I really love this word. Uh, uh, it, it's, it was when it's a religious term. Right. It was when uh, Jesus. I heard it on my Sunday sessions. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't even use it in church. The only time I've used it is is in non-religious terms. But originally, it was when Jesus rose from the dead and then went back up to heaven. You know, theoretically. Sure. And, and and it was like he he completed in in the most like pure. It was a pure example of everything that was meant to come so it was like the ultimate completion or, or the ultimate example of oh, okay. so <laughs> you're still that, like i don't know if that's us yet well no 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 no, no. <laughs> right. it's, Working on it. yeah but it's great to see where uh where advice practices are going mm. yeah and, and and i think though you, you know i'd like to include you guys in those other couple examples and i'm sure that there are others out there that i'm yes. not including yes, yes, yes. um it, it, but it's, it's really really exciting it's really cool to see um because ultimately financial advice i think in the new world is uh, offering value right because you're the person who knows things and there's people that know other things that aren't money mm. so they come to you for, to learn money things so mm. you offer value yeah and then you receive value and the value is in money mm. sure. so it's just an exchange of value mm. and the fact that we've seen since fofa that separation between product mm. and what financial advice is capable of and to, to see these these uh these companies with no legacy mm. like you guys mm. yeah i love it mm. you know i i fucking love it yeah <laughs> people thought we think thought think we're crazy yeah. <laughs> um 
you know, because arguably it's it's a it's a harder road because yeah. people buy books of clients because it's an instant oh, of um, course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, revenue yeah. base. And, and yeah. you know, Glenn mentioned, you know, we've been planning for this for a long period of time. And financially yeah. we are we have been planning for this yeah. for a really long period of yes. time. So that we could take that purist model where yeah. we could build things from the ground up and not have someone call us who we've never met before mm. who has got an aged care question or you know, totally. a mm. pension question. Yeah. I mean we know lots of fabulous advisors that want to work in that space. Yes. Why would we want, you know, we shouldn't be helping a client with that because that's not our core skill set. Totally. It, um, yeah, I think it puts the pressure on, right, to achieve, mm. which then opens up this. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> which then opens up this, you know, realm of possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Then what can we do to add value to someone's life regarding money? And, and, and money decisions are life decisions and life decisions are money decisions. So, yeah. so you, you ultimately how the ultimate value is how can I improve this person's life? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's where the conversation is centered around rather than, uh, Oh, someone else rolled out of that product that mm. we purchased. Damn, mm. you know, and, and, mm. and like uh, full transparency, when I started my company, uh, which I don't have anymore, but, uh, I didn't. I didn't even know that there was another way. Sure. Right? Yeah, right. So, so if we go back four or five years, when I was in the process of starting a company, um, none of these conversations were happening, and that was only four or five years ago. Yeah, because mm. that was the norm. Correct. Mm. And it still is the norm. Absolutely. Mm. You know. And so I, I, I did it, and then during that time had this big transition, mm. uh, which was mind blowing because mm. I'd grown up in this framework mm. of this is how you start a company. And literally <laughs> after I'd started it, then the conversations were, did you know you can do this? Yeah. And then as the moment we were having these conversations, uh, I remember going back yeah, and, and having these early conversations with Ben before he'd started his practice. Um, our minds were blown, you know, the mm. concept of, wait a second, you can charge an advice fee. Mm. But what do you talk about? <laughs> you yeah. know? People are still grappling with that. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, what we often talk about, I suppose, our biggest challenges. Yes. And in terms of the clients that, that we want to work with, they have never seen an advisor before. Mm. So don't really know what the experience is going to be like. Yeah. Um, they assume that advice is only for the ultra wealthy and the rich and who have copious amounts yep. to invest. Yeah. Yes. And the third is they don't know if now is the right time to seek advice. Yep. So in, in the very first meeting that, that Jess and I have with a prospective client, it's, it's really overcoming those, those three things. Yes. And talking about the fee, to, to your point around advice. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Oh, what what is this person required to to pay in order yeah. to get yeah. these benefits? Yeah. So we articulate what the value proposition is because, as Glenn said, a yeah. lot of them are like, "Well, I don't have two hundred k sitting in my bank account. What am I doing? You know, here? why mm. would I come and see? What's the totally. value? Totally. Um, but similarly, you know, we want our clients to know from a transparency perspective. This is what you pay. Yes. And that's why we've got three different coaching programs, which... What are you doing? Uh, because it's... What's, what's a really interesting... Oh, it's not that interesting. It's kind of a little bit old and dated conversation now is this concept of what is my CVP? What is mm -hmm. my client value proposition, right? Like the reason that the industry has had this conversation for so long is because it hasn't known what to do other than take, take an income, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so... If you guys are clear, how are you able to make that clear? Mm. Just using that point that you just made around, mm. if I don't have to, you know, if, if I'm not really wealthy, but they're still coming in for a meeting. So you've obviously done something yeah. mm. to, 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 uh, to communicate that value mm. before they have entered the room. Mm. What is that? What are you doing? Well, people are coming in for lots of different reasons and I think they're each unique. I, mm. I think the main thing is that all people have financial aspirations yes. of some kind. Um, mm. Typically, we haven't in the financial advice sector, you know, looked at all of them because there wasn't an underlying product that we could 
sure. give them for that. Yes. So if someone wants to travel for 12 months or mm. they want to buy their first home, mm. that, you know, and even cash flow management, mm. you know, that wasn't scoped into the advice, yeah. which is kind of crazy for our client base because that's what they want help with. Mm -hmm. So the fact that each of them have financial aspirations, yes. it's really um, a lot of them are coming to us because they just don't have a game plan mm. yeah. and they've spent years working their backside off and yeah. a lot of them haven't saved and they don't mm. have a lot to show for it. And quite a lot of it's frustration at themselves that they haven't got to where they want to be. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we just meet with them initially for a coffee, really cash. Yeah. And we just ask them some really simple questions about, you know, what's, what's frustrating you about your situation at the moment? You yeah. know, where did you think you would be? How, how off track are you? Yes. And if you keep doing what you're doing, do you think you're going to get mm. kind of where you want to be? Yeah. And it's pretty easy to see their brain ticking and then say, you know, no, like I haven't, I haven't really got myself where I want to be. And if I keep mm. tracking the same way that I, been tracking mm. i'm not going to get there and so for us it's really easy to say well, you know we this is what we would do for you mm. and this is how we would make sure you get there then clients go amazing like i can see the value really mm. how good is that totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you just have to make it really bespoke to you know i, I don't want to talk to 35 year olds about their retirement plan mm. right like, yes, we need to consider it in our strategy, but totally. they're not interested in that yeah, as far. Yeah, absolutely. They want to travel to Europe every year and they want to, yes. you know, buy property and yes. do fun stuff. Yes. We have to change how we speak to consumers because the way that I think us as an entire conglomerate um, within financial advice, yes. you know, if I look at most people's websites, what do we do? We help them with <laughs> superannuation, retirement planning, estate planning, like yeah. our clients. Yeah, 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 don't yeah, care yeah. About. That's not the yeah. leading mm. discussion point. Yeah, it's it's so funny, isn't it? To to look, at, I see financial planning, um, and the whole finance industry actually, it's it hasn't needed to be, you know, modern and up to date and follow this client centric point of view mm. because um, it's such a profitable industry, mm. right? And, you know, what, like what other client uh, facing industry hasn't really evolved in its communication to uh, the masses since the 70s? I would know? say one oh. and I would say medical, you know, well, it? the medical profession, like you book oh, to see right. a specialist, they have yeah. to fax them information, like they are in the same, yeah. they're fat and happy, right? Like yeah. they yeah. make money whether, yeah. you know, they've got clients. Mm. waiting mm. you know you've got to call the other reception at like it's <coughs> just as antiquated yeah. but apart from that there are very few yes mm. and i think the point to that is that will not be the future totally not and the kids of people's current clients yeah are not going to want advice delivered in the same way oh my god no not even close and um, yeah it, it, it even even um what, what I think is quite funny now is we've got a generation of advisors who are looking to exit the industry with these uh, old school businesses, right? And they're going to look for, for buyers, right? They're looking for who I was five years ago, right? Yeah. Um, but there's less and less and less of me five years ago. And there's more and more and more of you guys today. Yeah. So... You know, a part of me is a little bit concerned because uh, I know some some uh, older advisors that have that I actually really like. They're mm -hmm. really cool guys. Yeah, of course. Um, but when they talk about valuations, they're talking about valuations as if they were five years ago or or, or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've got a mate. Uh, and I love him to death and he's, you know, he's in his sixties and he makes a million bucks a year and yada, yada, yada. And he, uh, you know, he, he wants four times annual mm. revenue for his business. And, and that's just not going to happen because, um, so, uh, I know a planner who has started a business from scratch they are only uh, a handful of years in mm. and they're already doing uh, half of that. Mm. Yeah. No debt. Mm. Yeah. No purchase. Yeah. Um, because starting from scratch has allowed this person to simply focus on, well, how do I, I think, I think if you're, if you're top level, and your focus and the reason why you start a business is 
I want to improve people's lives. Mm. Right. Yeah. And then literally then it just comes down to, well, how do I make that super efficient and super effective on this hand? Mm. And how do I bring as many people through the door as possible? Yeah. They are really the two yeah. Yeah. things to focus on. Because if you've got your top level, how do I just be the best advisor ever? Then, um, yeah, those are the two things. Totally. And there will be such, like, if you look at multiples in years to come, like t- taking that client, oh, sorry, that advisor as an example, yeah. you know, not that we, we have aspirations to buy a book, but, you know, if we did, you have to, there's going to be an efficiency and a technological overlay in terms of understanding multiples. And people need to kind of wake up a bit because there's some really kind of delusions in terms of multiples. Totally. But, you know, why, why would you? If you can run an ultra lean business, and, and we've spent a lot of time really thinking about what is the client journey? Yeah. End awesome. to end. And what are the pain points? Like we, there's awesome. a lot of pain points in that process for yeah. our client. And how do we move mountains to reduce mm. them or remove them? Who's, who does what in the business? Like what, what, <laughs> what, and, and, <laughs> so who does, who does the client journey, for example? So the onboarding is men. Yep. Um, the ongoing engagement is just. So you're, you're the welcome to Fox in Hand. Yep. And you are, this is how we're going to do it. So we both manage. Well, like, oh, sorry, with, this with, is, this, sorry, this is what we've done. Yeah, so we, we both kind of spent time thinking about the client journey, but, you know, mm. we, we then came to a point where we were like, well, one person needs to own this end-to-end. Yeah. Mm. So that's Glenn from an upfront perspective. So it's not that I don't go and meet clients mm. in the upfront stage, sure. but in terms of documenting and, have, you know, we've got a process mm. document, God knows how many pages it is now, mm. you know, that's Glenn's responsibility to make sure it's up to scratch. And from mm. an ongoing perspective, that's my responsibility. Yeah. Mm. Um, and we actually sat down and mapped out all of our business responsibilities because it's easy to double up and that's just stupidly inefficient. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're one of the only, especially young advisors I know that wears a tie, but I've just looked at that. And there's Do you know what it is? Skulls. Alexander McQueen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew you were going to bring up what I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Which, mate, I take, I take my hat off to. But literally, how cool is this? It's You've got cool. skulls on your tie. <laughs> But that's not your normal get up for Surrey Hills days. No, so our head office is Surrey Hills. Yep. Um, if I'm just staying in Surrey Hills, it's jeans, t-shirt, jeans, sure. uh, and a shirt. Yep, yep, yep. Um, because if I'm sitting down in a hipster cafe where the chairs are like this high and I'm in a full suit, it yeah. looks pretty awkward. <laughs> um, but if I'm going into the city, which I am today, yes. I'll put on the uh, put on the monkey suit. So I literally right. dress based on, I guess, who I'm meeting with with that day to ensure yeah. that they feel as comfortable as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Um, and are you enjoying it? Loving it. It is full on. It is overwhelming at some points. Yeah. Um, the feedback that we've got has been really amazing. Yeah. Um, everything that all the systems and processes and um, or, or I guess the back office staff as well as the client journey is an ever evolving, I guess, project, yeah. I suppose you could say which is what we wanted and which is what we anticipated. Like after every single meeting we do, we critique each other, we critique the processes, we, uh, the, the process we went through, we critique the questions we asked, mm. we critique our follow-up, mm. um, everything. And I think um, we are fortunate in that there are two of us because we, we have spoken to a couple of startups, um, not financial planners, um, yep. and some of, the, some of the people that went, went solo. Um, they felt that it was challenging just because, you know, they didn't have that person to, to kind of bounce ideas off. Yes. Um, and even with touching on, like, it's the roles and responsibilities piece, although I manage, you know, the, the documenting the onboarding process, mm. it is um, a reflection of both of us, mm-hmm. except I just manage it. Um, and say, you know, marketing. It just, just, I suppose, owns the marketing piece. Right. So it's her responsibility to kind of put together a marketing plan, brush then I critique. Is it basically her just waving her hair in the wind? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Standing out the I'm, front just... I'm disappointed you're here today because I said to Glenn, I've got a haircut booked for tomorrow. I could have had beautiful hair. Um, no, that's not the marketing plan. Okay, just joking. But I think this is leaning off corporate. Like, it's pretty rare, I think, for 
two people who have just started to have actually segmented pretty specifically who owns what and what is the role of that yeah, person yeah. Yeah. and what are we accountable to deliver to each other yep. mm. and we make sure that we hold each other to account for that that's awesome um, yeah. and we also ask the market so before before we even launched um i suppose a couple of months ago we held a focus group 12 months ago we held a focus group about four months ago um and that was just getting I guess this room here full of 10, 12 prospective clients. Mm. Um, we had an external uh, facilitator um, come in and facilitate the discussion. And mm. the first focus group was around, I guess, our um, ideal client's attitude towards money, the concept of financial advice, things like that. And yep. then the, the more recent focus group taking on the feedback from the first was really showing them our advice process, our website, our ongoing engagement philosophy, yeah. um, and just getting them to rip it apart. Cool. Um, which, is a, which is a weird experiment. Yeah. Because you've been tinkering in the background yeah. in the lab for so long, and you think what you've built is the most beautiful, amazing thing in the entire world, yeah. and then yeah. you kind of put it up um, yeah. for critiquing. Yeah. You know, it's incredibly important and apologies there's some some lovely tram work getting, <laughs> we're getting a tram here so i'm sorry if you can hear it yeah, yeah. um yeah so that's it, that in itself was so powerful because we are we fit within our demographic and we think we understand our demographic pretty well right but just even basic stuff that we were overlooking like one of the pieces of feedback and i can think of a lot mm. was you know on our um what we do for clients we have things like you know gearing and blah 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 and one of the people said i don't know what gearing is yeah mm. like we just have so much jargon and we were yes. like oh my god mm. we've we've accidentally let jargon slip through and we said we didn't want to do that because wow. we don't yes. want to intimidate so mm. it's been great like if you don't do that at the moment you're doing yourself a disservice like yes it's uncomfortable because people like attack things that you think are beautiful yeah but what we have been able to kind of end up with is so much better 100%, because yeah. you know we got 12 different opinions and look you have to take it with a bit of greater salt because yeah. people disagree and then you have to make a call about which one you think is right yes um but the learnings were profound and amazing mm. and it was worth definitely worth doing and we want to do it yeah. continually i think the interesting thing for, for for me off the back of that focus group was a lot of the stuff that Jess and I were grappling with. So we were, we were pretty confident in terms of what we we're doing up to around, I suppose, say 75%. And there was 25%, we, we weren't sure which way we were going to swing. And then after that focus group, we were really yeah. clear in terms of awesome. how, how we're going to move forward. How does someone organize something like this? Yeah, so we, we basically... Uh, What's the name of the company? Uh, oh, there's heaps. There's is heaps. there? Yeah, yeah, there's heaps. Oh, uh, okay. And to, to your point, so it's not, it wasn't a facilitator that deals with financial services. We didn't want that. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah, and yeah the person yeah. that did our website, we had never done a financial services website. Before. Yeah, We nice. didn't want that. Yeah. Um, the websites that we showed out of um, our creative, what we liked, were not financial services websites. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but, but to your point, in terms of getting 12 people in the room, look, we asked friends of friends. So not people that sure. know us, yep. um, but people we may have seen once or twice. That's so, right. So I didn't really know what we were doing and from all walks of life. So right. we had event coordinators, we had a nurse, we had um, someone that looks after client experience at Virgin Mobile. Yeah, right. Um, just, just randoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wine, lots of wine, lots because that, of wine. that helps, um, you know, get the <laughs> come, Smart. truth so come out. Yeah. Truth serum. Um, lots cheese. of cheese. Lots of cheese. Okay. I've specialised in building beautiful <laughs> cheese boards now. Mm. So wine and cheese. An external facilitator. For, 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 for those that aren't great at wine and cheesing, uh, what would, is, would Doritos suffice? Nah, do cheese. No. Cheese well, for sure. look, it's a reflection of your business. I think it's just easy. Go to Audi and buy five cheeses <laughs> and some crackers and shove them on a board. Just stab a knife yeah, in the middle. Yeah, it's so, but it's like, it's so easy to do. And you just yeah. ask people for an hour and a half of their time. Yeah. You know, we did simple things like we wrote everyone a thank you card. We got yeah. little gifts as they left to say, I mean, people are giving up their time and totally. they're, you know, divulging personally, you know, especially the first one. How do you feel about money? Who taught you about money? Yeah. Um, you know, there was some personal information shared. Yeah. And so, you know, you need to think of all the teeny tiny 1% things to, to make sure people really understand that you value their time and opinion. Yes. Um, mm. And the, the wonderful thing is now a lot of them are 
coming on as clients. <laughs> that's because, awesome. Yeah. Because they've helped build our business. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's really smart. Wow, that would be a great, just, you, you could do that every six months. Yeah. So it's in the calendar. So at the moment it's booked in for every year, <laughs> yeah. but it is every single year we will be doing at least one. That's brilliant. And then picks up clients as well. Um, I think what we'll do is just with respect to the, what, the, the noise, noise yeah. we'll, um, we'll, we'll cut it here. But uh, potentially, I think we've probably got a lot more to discuss about. So uh, we're getting a new podcast, a professional booth and everything coming up. So it'd be great to have you guys on board there. But for now, thank you very much. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.